right, all right, all right, all right. Thank you so much for joining me today here on the Red Pill Investor Podcast, as well as Sell More Homes Now here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me here today while we're doing some live prospecting. If this is the very first time that you've joined us, well then welcome. Thank you so much. I'd highly encourage you to go ahead and hit that notify and subscribe button down there. That way you'll be notified the very next time we get to prospecting. That way you won't miss out on anything. Basically, the way this format goes, I go ahead and I share a little bit of the day's news with you, along with some commentary while we're prospecting. And what uh, hopefully I'm, I'm intending with this is really two things. First, go ahead and maintain my accountability to you. Uh, that way I can, you know, pro, you know, what is it? Uh, practice what I preach, right? I, I go ahead and I do the same things I tell you to do every day. Plus it helps me maintain my accountability uh, so that I don't slack off because I'm just like you. I tend to screw around. And so it's always good for me to know that as soon as I get up in the morning, I need to come in here and get on the phone and prospect with you. And then of course, uh, secondly, I just hope that you would go ahead and learn something you know, that we would learn something together through the news, through the commentary, uh, maybe even from the people that we talk to, if we can hear something that our customers say, that our clients say, something that'll help us uh, learn, well, then I think that many times that's going to help us go ahead and perform better in the next sales situation that we're in. You know, every single time you find yourself in a sales situation, you win, you lose, but you always get a lesson. And the more sales situations you can find yourself in, then obviously the better you're going to get through time. So today is absolutely no different. I've got a bunch of stories set up for us that I think are going to be fascinating as we go through. Plus, we're going to go ahead and do some dialing for dollars. We're going to make sure we get some appointments set today. We're going to pay a special attention to that so that we'll make sure that we don't forget our primary purpose. Uh, which is to set appointments. Of course, I had to get my appointment book out while I was sitting there talking about it. I wanted to make sure that I was fully prepared as well. And as I'm looking through my appointment book, I know, you know what? I could always use another one. So we're going to do that today as well. But before we do, let's do like we always do and take this to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for our health. We appreciate your love for us, Father, that you would Give us another chance to, to spread your word, to spread your love, to help our society and our communities. Lord, I'd ask that you'd bless the people that we're about to talk to today. I know many of them are going to be upset. Father, I'd ask that you'd forgive them for they don't know what they're saying. You just look over their anger, Lord. Help me to say the right things that would help them to see how we can help them and not hurt them. And Lord, I'd ask that you'd watch over those who are watching this show or listening to this podcast, that they would be safe today, that they would be blessed and prosperous, and that you would give a special blessing to them. Father, I ask all of these things in your son's name. Amen. All right, let's get started. So I've got my phone ready. Let me turn it up. There we go. And press start. Now... Let's get started. I'm not sure how much. So first, as always, we're... the extension you have reached is currently busy. If you okay. hello, hi, this is Carl Krenzel. How are you today? I wish you'd quit calling me. Oh, I'm not sure if I have the right person. Are you the fellow who owns that property on Copper Creek? No. Oh, you've called gosh. Me, you've called me. You've called me. Okay. Well, I won't call you no more, my brother. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a nice day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you to that. Oh, okay. Well, you can count on it. Take care. I have no interest in calling you any more than you want me to call you. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Good deal. All right. So let's see. Well, that's a good way to get started, right? Get the negative ones out of the way first. Now, Pew Research, uh, the good folks over at Pew, Pew Research, right? They did a study here recently about smartphone usage. And it says that one in five Americans own a smartphone, but do not have traditional broadband service. Okay, meaning that 20% of the American population is using their smartphone as their only source of internet. 
Okay, they don't have internet at the house or something like that for their for their laptops. No, they're using. Hi, you've reached Frank Coates with Whole Foods Market. Please leave a message, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks, and have a great day. At the. They're. Uh, there we go. They're. Uh, they're using their smartphone uh, as their internet. Okay. So what does that mean for you? Now, traditionally, if you're a real estate agent or a wholesaler, perhaps, especially if you've been in the game for a little while, okay, you've always sort of thought of the internet and your web page as something that the client or customer would look at on their laptop. But if 20% of the population right now is not using broadband service, they're just using their smartphone for their internet. Well, then one in five of your customers is looking at your web page, and it may or may not be optimized for a smartphone. It may, in fact, be optimized for a laptop. And that's fine for 80% of your customers out there, but for 20% of your customers and a growing percentage of them, okay, uh, it, it, it looks a little funny. And the reason why I bring this to your attention is because, you know, in this world, think about the way you interact in it. Okay. Now I don't know how old you are listening to this podcast or watching me here on YouTube. I'm not really sure your age group. Okay, so I'm going to make a couple assumptions that might be wrong, all right? But I'm going to assume from the outset that you are probably like most everybody else. And if that's the case, if you're like most everybody else, well, isn't it doesn't it stand a reason that if 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 the things you do well, most everybody else might do that too. I mean, like for me, this is the way I look at it. For me, I spend an enormous amount of time on my cell phone and very little on my laptop. I mean, comparatively speaking. I mean, I have a laptop and I use it, and don't get me wrong, but I primarily, I use my cell phone and my smartphone. I, I tend to look, listen, have my ears plugged into everything. Now, incidentally, I just want to bring this to your attention. Uh, we had... 26 expireds with 37 phone numbers, okay? When I just started this uh, a few minutes ago, I told you we were going to press start and all that. I pressed start on that on we were dialing three dials at a time with this Vortex dialer, okay? We ran through every single one of those numbers, though all 37 of those left a voicemail in that time, and we're done with that already. That's how fast... You can flip through some of these numbers if they're not. And this is 830 in the morning. This is a little bit later than I'd hoped. But I mean, you're flipping through numbers quick. <laughs> okay. I mean, quick. All right. So let's go ahead and st start in here to the for rent by owners. All right. Might get a little bit more. Uh, might get a little bit more interruption here. So we'll see what happens. Dial. We're going to dial these also three at a time. Okay. Uh, we're calling the ones that have not answered in the past. Uh, or we weren't able to get some kind of disposition. So we have a total of 29 uh, prospects that are for rent by owners that we're going to call right now. And we're going to call them three at a time. So the phone dialer is going to round, you know, boom, 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 three at a time. And each one of them has uh, probably two numbers or at the most. Uh, well, no, it doesn't look we have just one number each, I guess. So this shouldn't take very long either. So boom, just press start three at a time. Let's see how long it takes to call 29 people, right? Because remember, this is a contact sport. I mean, this is all about your ability to contact a lot of people quickly and determine who amongst them is the most likely candidate that's going to give you a, a lead or become a lead themselves, right? So uh, as we're getting back to this topic of, of Pew's research, okay, when they were starting to talk about your smartphone uh, and smartphone usage, okay, the the numbers are shocking demographically how it breaks down okay uh now let me just go ahead and put this out here one in five 
Americans own a smartphone but do not have traditional broadband service. Okay, now listen to how this breaks down. Now, this is not my words. This is not my opinion. Okay, this is Pew Research and their uh, facts that they had. I'm sorry, their uh, surveys that they had done. Okay, and the demographics that they had shown. Now, check this out. Okay. Ages 18 to 29, 67% of the people reported that they had broadband at home. Okay, 28% said that they had smartphone, but no broadband. And 5% said no broadband or smartphone. <laughs> okay. So 18 to 29, 65% of the people said that they had smart, uh, I'm sorry, they had broadband at home. So they got something for their internet, for their laptop, typically at home, right? 30 to 49, all right, you have 70% of the people having broadband at home, 24% saying that they're operating off their smartphone, and 7% with no broadband or smartphone at all. Now, watch how these numbers kind of change as you get older, right? 50 to 64, we all have that brother, a little bit, old, I, got, I got an older brother, <laughs> right? Broadband at home, you know, he reluctantly has it, right? But he usually goes off his smartphone, right? Uh, the broadband at home, 68% of people aged 50 to 64 say that they have broadband at home. And 16% say that they operate off a smartphone. Look at that. So from 18 to 29, all right, 28% of the people who, who are using the internet say that they're using it from a smartphone. And then when you get to 50 to 64, the number drops down to 16% say that they're using a smartphone and they have 68% on their web page. Uh, I'm sorry, their broadband. Now, who is the, the client that you're trying to attract? Are you trying to attract that 50 to 60, uh, 50 to 64 year old person who's using the internet at home? Well, so far you got a pretty good chance, but understand that that metric is 16% that that's using a cell phone. Currently 18 to 29 year olds are 28% of the time using the smartphone and 67%, which is about the same as the 50 to 64 year old is using a smart, uh, broadband at home. Now look at the, look at the way that this kind of breaks down if you, uh, oh, see, here I am talking and I did, I forgot to press dial. <laughs> that didn't help. You have reached Nicole Clifford. I'm unable to get to the phone right, right now, but if you leave a message, I'll get back to you. Right, there we go. I was wondering why that phone was going uh, with nothing for so long. It seemed like it was an awful long time without any kind of answer. That seemed awfully odd. Let me turn this down just a little bit. Maybe it won't be quite so loud. There we go. All right. Let's see if that helps. No. Hello. Hi, I'm not sure if you can hear me this time. My phone was giving me some trouble. Uh, I'm calling about that rental you had listed online. Is that still available? It is. Yep. Got a couple of people looking at it, but uh, yeah, it's currently nothing safe. Okay, right on. Okay, well, again, my name's Carl Krenzel. Uh, I'm a broker who buys property. I was just calling to see what your long term plans were with that property. Oh, yeah. Um, it's a golden piece of property. <laughs> buyer specifically that is uh, highly motivated and willing to offer above market value not interested <laughs> i don't blame you my brother that was happening in the area i know i was i was looking at that uh, that house myself and uh and i thought oh well maybe maybe he'd be interested in selling let me let me give him a ring because that's uh that's a great piece of property you got there all right no, exactly. I've, had it for about, I've had it for about 20 years oh uh, wow I don't intend to do anything with it, and like I said, unless there's like a serious developer that has a bigger plan, yeah. that knows what the value is, is willing to come in with a very, very generous offer. Yeah, you'd have to be dumb to turn it down. I hear you. Well, let me ask you: Do you do you have any other rental properties at all, or is this the only one? Or uh, that's the only one. Yeah, my that yeah, that's that's the only one. Okay. All right. Well, listen, do you, do you happen to know perhaps of anybody else who's got an unwanted property that I could buy for cash? 
Not offhand. See, one of my friends just got rid of his last year. Uh, no, my brother and sister have a house in that area too, but they also okay. don't. They're in the same situation. All right. Yeah, well, no, I can't really help you on that right no now. No worries. Well, listen, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today, and you stay out of this heat today. It's going to be super hot, okay? Yeah, you as well. All right, brother. Have a great day. All right. Take care. You too. Uh huh. Yes, sir. Bye bye. All right. Boom. There we go. Much better. Okay. Now, now we're started. Okay. <laughs> now, now we're back on track. Okay. All right. So when we're thinking about your, your smartphone, okay, now that you understand a little bit about what Pew is saying from this, okay, Pew Research, now when we're starting to talk about income, they've even broke it down to income, okay? Now listen, people who make less than $30,000 a year, okay, this is again, according to Pew Research, not me, all right, according to Pew Research, 45% of the homes uh, that, uh, that, that I'm sorry, people that, that make uh, families or homes that, that, that are making Call less has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Hmm. Yes. Uh, the, uh, the homes that are making $30,000 or less, right? Uh, hello, please state your name after the tone and Google voice will try to connect you. Carl. Okay, well, I guess we're going to go ahead and drop that one. Hang up. Yeah, so, uh, right, move on. Okay. So, Hello. again. Hello. Please state your name. No, I'm not falling for that one again. Try to connect you. Oh, no, not today. All right, resume. Pew Research was saying that uh, $30,000 or less, 45% of the families there have homes that have broadband. Uh, I'm sure I'd say uh, 45% of the homes have broadband, right? So if you're making $30,000 or less, all right, you got a, a 45% chance that you're going to be using broadband at home for your internet. Hello, please state your name after the tone and Google Voice will try to connect you. Now here's where this becomes important. All right, let me, uh, let me compare that, okay? With those who make thirty thousand to seventy five, well seventy four nine ninety nine, right? So if you make thirty thousand to seventy four nine ninety nine, all right, seventy two percent of those people have broadband at home, and they use their smartphone eighteen percent of the time with no broadband. Okay, so thirty thousand and less, forty five percent of the time you have broadband at home. 31% of the time you're using your smartphone, right? And if you're 30,000 and just under 75, it's jumped up to 72% of the time you're using broadband at home and you have 18% of the time you're using your smartphone, all right? Now, for those who are $75,000 and above in household income, okay, 87% of the time they use broadband at home and 9% of the time are they using their smartphone. Not surprisingly, okay, this correlates directly with the level of education. You know, high school or less, you got about a 48% chance of using broadband at home, whereas in college, you're at 85% of the chance and 10% of the chance of using your smartphone. Why? Well, probably a couple reasons. You know, if you are a college graduate, you know, you're making a lot of money. Hello, please state your name after the tone and Google Voice will try to... You know, having, a, having a broadband at home you know, it's not going to be a cost that's going to be a problem for you, and you're probably going to use it for work. Hi, you reached kind of like, sorry, I can't get to the phone right now, but if you leave it, Nate. So understand what this really means, okay? At the moment, people are using their laptops and, and broadband at home, okay? If... Uh, they're in a little bit of a higher price range, or I'm sorry, a little bit of higher demographic uh, in terms of uh, uh, income, right? And education level, right? But that is also changing. And 
The reason why I bring this up, okay, is because, let me just pull this out real fast so you can see it. Well, you won't be able to see it. Um, what you want to think about is uh, this article that came out in Realtor.com said, is your site ready for smartphone only internet users? Okay. Now, I just read to you the results of a smart, uh, I'm sorry, of the Pew Research, right? And, oh, goodness, that we, now here we, we, read, we went through all those for rent by owners three at a time. There we went, went through that real fast. Okay, so let's go back. Let's call pre-foreclosures. We have 128 leads, it says. Dial. Let's see, how many do we have here? Hang on. We have 64 that we're going to call. We had 104 with no answers. So looks like we have a total of 80, 89 phone numbers to call. And we're going to call them three at a time. Press go, press dial, and boom. Okay, so now we're back at it, right? Hello. Please state your name after the tone, and Google Voice will try to connect. Nope. Not going to do that. So... Uh, Realtor.com brought up, they said, well, is your site ready for smartphone only internet users? Now I just brought to you the information from Pew Research. Now, according to them, this is from Realtor. Hello. Hi, you've reached our main phone. I can't come to the phone right now, but if you leave your name and number, I'll call you right back. Thanks for calling. Hmm. Okay. Not sure who that was. So, uh, let's see here. So more U.S. adults are getting on the internet via their... ...forwarded to an automatic voice message system. 5203601232 is not a... Okay. Okay, so let me just go ahead and read this uh, article a little bit here for you uh, while this is dialing. There we go. So more U.S. adults are getting on the internet via their smartphone, and you may want to put more focus on how your website looks on mobile devices to make sure the experience isn't a turnoff. Peggy? Okay. All right. Let's see if we can catch her again. Hmm. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see. 37% of U.S. adults typically tend to reach for their smartphone to access the internet, a significant increase from the 19% of adults who reported doing so in 2013, according to a new Pew Research Center survey. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Oh, hi. This is Carl. How are you? This is who? <laughs> My name's Carl Krenzel. Uh, is Ronald available? Is who available? Ronald. Ronald Stanwood available? No. Oh, goodness. Okay. I might have the wrong number. I was calling about that property that was for sale at 13540 East Rex Molly Road. Am I calling the right number? Oh, gosh. Okay, do you happen to ho have a, a phone number for that property owner? No idea. Oh, I see. Okay, do you don't know anything about it. Huh? Okay, well, gosh, I'm sorry. All right, well, listen, I hope you have a great day. Uh, since I got you here anyway, do you know anybody who's got an unwanted home that I could buy for cash? Take that as a no. All right. All right, so let's see here. Where was I? So, uh, yeah, they, they were saying that 37% uh, of the United States adults typically tend to reach for their smartphone in order to access the Internet, which is a significant increase from the 19% of Americans who reported doing so 
in 2013. So within five years, okay, 37% now, 2019 versus what? 19%? Almost double. Okay, you got almost double the amount of people who are going on the internet and looking at things on the internet on their smartphone than they did uh, on, a, on a laptop computer. Laptop computers and broadband internet access in the home is becoming less. Why do I bring this up? Okay, well, listen. There's going to come a time... Por favor, deje su mensaje para... There's going to come a time, okay, if, 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 if in 2013, just five years ago, things have changed that much with regards to cell phones. I mean, think about the cell phone you had five years ago. Is it the same one you have now? Probably not. And think about the capabilities that the cell phone you have now, things you can do now versus the, the, the flip phone or, or whatever you had back in the day. So in light of this, right, what does your internet presence look like? Are you still putting out that same tired content that you did before? Are you putting out those same boring blog posts? Are you, or are you engaging your internet crowd? Are you engaging the community? You know, when I first started out in real estate, I remember all the, the, the teachers and the trainers telling me, you know, you got to build up your center of influence. You got to build up these people who know, like, and trust you. And you got to communicate with them on a daily basis. And you got to let them know that you're in the real estate business. You know, they used to say that you need to, you know, go out and, uh, hello. Try you reach professional services and tax and time tax professionals we're open monday through friday from 10 to 6 yeah i don't think this is the right person i've, I've called number. them before we'll so as soon as possible. delete them all right resume there we go so um you know back in the day you were to mail to them four times a year you know reach out to them go see them you know perhaps hold a party you know, I, I remember agents holding big parties, inviting all their customers, their centers of influence and people that they knew, right? And have a big get together and, and write it off on their taxes so they could, you know, get all their centers of influence in one place and start talking together. Isn't it true that we hardly know anybody though? I mean, aside from our close friends and family, we probably aren't really chummy with a lot of other people. And maybe it's just me. Maybe it is just me, okay? But it seems like a lot of people that I talk to, whether it be when I'm prospecting or in church or wherever, I mean, it's not like we all get out and know our neighbors. We live in the same homes for years. We don't get out and talk to our neighbor across the street. You know, it's, it, it's, it's very rare. Yeah, and when you do find that situation when, when, for example, you go to a party somewhere and they've got a cul-de-sac and, and well, gosh, everybody in the cul-de-sac comes out with food and wine and drinks and everybody's having a good time in the sunset, enjoying the weather together as a community in the cul-de-sac. You know, we, we look at that sort of thing as, wow, that's just, that's just unique. I wish I had something like that in my community right? Where we would all just go out on a Friday night, sit down under a tree and drink wine and, and talk and as a community, as, a, as, as neighbors. And then maybe Saturday morning, we would get up and, and go out by that same place and drink coffee and maybe bring somebody to bring a Danish and we'd, you know, read the papers or whatever. You know, those old time type things that happen still happen. But when they happen today, okay, it's seen as an anomaly versus reality. It's seen as an anomaly, as something uh, that doesn't happen very often, as opposed to the way things should happen. Why do I keep bringing this up? Okay, well, if your center of influence is supposed to be like that, and you don't even know your neighbors, you don't spend time with your neighbors, you don't go out and talk to them, you don't have that environment where you're out drinking wine and in the evening and coffee and danishes in the morning. If you don't have that environment, 
Okay, it's difficult for you to generate business out of your center of influence. Maybe you know that one or two people in your marketplace who are exceptionally good. They were blessed, if you will, right? They had all the good friends, the right friends. Maybe they came from a really good job. Maybe they came from a sales job where, where they were in medical sales or prescription sales or this or that, and they had a... Fab shop too, Tony. Oh gosh, you know what? I got the wrong number altogether. <laughs> no worries. All right, brother. Have a great day. Take care. You too, man. Uh-huh. Let's see. Wrong number. Boom. Maybe you didn't have that sort of situation, but you know, when you think about it, there are people around you who have. They got all the good connections, the, the ones with the money or whatever, right? <laughs> Seem like they got all the breaks. Maybe you know somebody like that. You know, it used to, and I'll be honest with you, I'm going to tell you some of my personal fears. I mean, because I, I I don't mind sharing my personal fears and, and my failures here on the podcast because I know nobody listens to the podcast. Nobody watches this on YouTube anyway. And so the chances of anybody really finding out how I really feel about things is slim to none. <laughs> but let me tell you how I feel. My fears, my fails, my foibles. I will be honest with you. For years, years and years and years, I felt inferior because of where I came from, how I grew up. I came from a tiny little farm town in, in Kansas. Hutchinson, Kansas. It's a well now it's a little bit larger, but back then it's a tiny little town. I mean, nobody knew about that place except the Amish who lived just north of us. <laughs> right? They came into town to get stuff. <laughs> Boom. We've called through all these pre-foreclosures. Wow. That was fast. Whoops. I ended the phone call there. All right. I didn't mean to do that. So let's go back. Let's see here. Who are we trying to dial here? foreclosures. All right. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to have a moment or two with you where I'm going to share with you my fears and a little bit of this news. And then we're going to hop back on the phone if that's okay with you. Okay. So if it's all right with you, I'm just going to pontificate for a minute or two before I get right back into the, into the uh, prospecting. So please forgive me. If you came here for the prospecting and the news, uh, you're just going to hear the news and my, uh, my, my feeling here for a minute. Right. And then we're going to jump back into the prospecting. So as I was saying that when, when I was a kid, okay, uh, I came from a, a small town. Uh, nobody knew anybody from that town. Nobody, nobody great came from that town. My parents, you know, good parents, right? Uh, but they weren't rich or anything like that. We were sort of lower middle class. Um, dad lost his job and we had to move to Tucson and, and that's what kind of brought me here and you know, and I had it very good, I think, compared to many people. You know, I had two parents who loved me and I had, you know, three square meals a day and a hot, you know, hot, uh, hot meals. And I had a, a bed to sleep in and, and who didn't abuse me. You know, I was very blessed in that sense. Right. But nonetheless, I still developed a lot of insecurities. And whenever I would come across an environment where I would go out and, and I would work really hard, you know, like I'd go sell 60, 70 homes in a year and I'd go to these meetings or whatever. I go to these places with the Mike Ferry organization. I go and I would go eat with some of these guys who would make millions of dollars and sell hundreds of homes. And I was, oh, oh, I would always be in such awe of these people thinking that I wasn't all, I don't know, worthy. Right. I was insecure. I felt like I wasn't smart enough to hang out with those kids. I, I felt like I was, you know, not, I, I didn't know everything. And, and I'd wished many times that I had the connections that people had. I, I wish I knew what you knew. I wish that I had the, the, the education that you had. I wish that I had the opportunity, the, the, the exposure to the people, the, the, the wherewithal, the whatever that you had to make all that money. And I don't have it. I, 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 I'm lacking somehow. And I'll be honest with you. That's the way I felt for years. I horribly insecure. I, 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 I do a lot of transactions, make a lot of money, but bless God, I would be so insecure 
about my production, about my intelligence, about my abilities. And that wrecked me for a very long time. It, it, it racked me for a long time, right? And I'll be honest with you. It, it was something, and even to this day, I still have to struggle with it sometimes. This feeling of inferiority. Like, if I just had another chance, if I just had a different opportunity, if I knew what you knew or knew who you know or whatever. We always know people in our communities or in our offices or whatever who are blessed like that. And we wish that, you know, we had something like that. Well, the truth is, there we go. That glare was killing me. The truth is that that uh, the internet has made everything equal, right? Facebook, internet, uh, I'm sorry, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, all the things you're doing today, okay, through the smartphone, you, you couldn't always do. And now the fact that people are even coming from the laptop down to the smartphone makes it even more advantageous for you. This, the smartphone, the internet, that's the great equalizer. If you don't know something, look it up. If, you, if you're missing uh, connections, people. It doesn't matter. You can talk to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. You can learn the skills you need to learn and you can overcome the problems that you're facing. And, and the fact is that if you start to be aware of the information that's available to you demographically, how things are changing, how things, then you can position yourself and your business in a, in, in, in a, in a way that you could be the person that people look at later and say, gosh, I wish I had that kind of foresight. Man, how did you know to do that? You can say to yourself, well, listen, I was watching the signs, just like me. People would say to me, well, gosh, Carl, how did you get into the real estate? I'm sorry, the REO business. I mean, how, how did you do that? I have people call me up about that from time to time. And, and I always tell them the same thing. And I'll tell you, it's just, it's not that I'm bright, right? I, I knew that what goes up must come down, right? I mean, that's just the way life works works. It's not special knowledge. And when you pay attention, that's the key. What I was telling you yesterday, when you pay attention, you can solve a lot of the problems that you have by simply paying attention. The biggest problem we have more often than not is we don't pay enough attention to the little things. All right. That's a little rant about that. All right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to call these for sale. By I'm going to call these uh, for sale by owners, right? And let's see what happens with them. Now, I'm going to have to focus a little bit here because what I'm going to try to do here is see what we can do about setting as close as we can to a listing appointment here. I'm not going to try and set just a regular old come on out and take a look at my house kind of thing. I'm not anxious to do that. We got 20 numbers to call. So we're going to dial them now. All right, let's dial this up. Okay, so dial. Let's see. 9516. Press that. Okay, here we go. Welcome to Storm. Boom shakalaka. All right. Now let me focus. I don't think I want this one. Yeah, I don't want this one. This is a mobile home. Hang up. I'm not interested in that. Resume. Okay. All right. So here we go. In case you're listening in right now, it's just uh... hello. Okay. There we go. It's it's trying to call this one person here who apparently picked up the phone and hung up. So we're trying to get them back on a priority call. Let's see here. Okay. Well, it looks like we've missed out on that dude. Okay. All right. Well, we're dialing three again. So 
calling 20 people three at a time shouldn't take too long at all. <laughs> I'm trying to focus a little bit on these. Hi, my name's Carl Krenzel. How are you today? I'm not sure if I have the right place. I was calling about the house was for sale by owner on Holly Stravenue. Yeah, that's right. Okay, no problem. Is that property still available? Yeah, it's actually, um, it's technically going um, in the market this weekend, but I just wanted to put it a little bit before time out there so that way, you know, people can start, um, you know, kind of kind of get gathering some information. I understand. Okay, no problem. And when you say it was going to be going on the market this weekend, do you mean it was going to be going on the market with an agent this weekend or it was officially for sale by owner this weekend? Yeah, it was going to be officially for sale by owner on Sunday. Okay, got you. All right, no worries. Now, I noticed that it says uh, that the ownership here is, I guess, Professional Property Purchasers, LLC. Is this uh, an investment firm? It is. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, well, again, my name is Carl Krenzel. I'm a broker here in town, and I also uh, buy a property. Was this a property that you guys had bought and then uh, done some rehab to it to, f to flip? Is that what happened? Correct. Okay, very cool. All right, no worries. And how much are you going to be asking for the property? Uh, this one is 155 Okay, great. No worries. And I'm curious, um, do you uh, about how many other properties do you guys buy a year? Okay, right on. Okay, good deal. And when you do buy these, I mean, the only reason why I'm asking is many times, I, I mean, I come across properties that I don't want to buy myself, but I'll wholesale them out to, you know, other investors and stuff. So do you folks typically pay cash or do you guys usually get private loans? Uh, we, um, we do a little bit of both. Okay. Probably. Okay, right on. Um, but yeah, we you pay cash and then we do also have private funds. Okay. But Would, uh, we do also sometimes from time to time, you know, do um, some wholesale, do some double closing, do some transactional property. Gotcha. Okay. Um, you know, this year we've already done about four or five of those. Well, hallelujah. Good for you. Okay. And uh, now this particular property here, uh, how how long did you guys, how long do you own this one? Oh, wow. Okay. So you literally just bought it then. Yeah. Okay. Good for you. All right. Well, listen, I appreciate you taking the time. What I'll do is I'll keep your name handy here. And then if I come across something that, uh, that, uh, looks like it might be uh, something, you know, sharing out to you, maybe you might be interested. I'll, I'll, I'll put it your way. How's that sound? Yeah, it sounds like a plan, and I'll go ahead and put you in my buyer's list through my system. And, and you know, when I have the next property, uh, that, you know, to that sounds great. Kind of, um, <laughs> we'll work together, yeah. What's your, what's your name, brother? My name's Christian. Christian. Well, God bless God. I love that name already. <laughs> All right, Christian. Well, listen, my name is Carl. Uh, I'm a broker here in town uh, with Sotheby's International. I buy uh, property here in Tucson a lot myself. And, and so uh, I call... Uh, people all across, uh, you know, all the for sale by owners, all the for rent by owners, everybody, uh, every day. And I'm always out here looking for properties to purchase. So if you come across something you're not into, let me know. Maybe me or my friends will be into it. And if I come across something that I'm not into, maybe you or your friends will be into it and I'll shoot your way. How's that sound? Yeah, that sounds perfect. Thank you so much for reaching out to me. Hey, no problem, brother. Well, that's how we, uh, that's how we make uh, business together. We, we make things happen like that. Exactly. That's a beautiful thing. All right, my man. You have a great day, okay? All right, Carl. God bless you. Thank yep. You. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so... All right, resume. There we go. Boom. Okay, so here we got another priority call. Problem with uh, calling for sale by owners three at a time is that many times they'll pick up the phone the first time around because, again, sale by owners are their cell phones many times. And uh, so what will happen is they'll pick up the phone right away and the system will then uh, give them a short voicemail and 
and uh, then it'll put them as a priority call next for you to call them next time, right? And or the next, uh, as soon as you get done with that phone, it'll dial the next guy or next time. And and so the the problem then is that with a for sale by owner, you know, hello. Oh, hi there. Sorry about that. I was having trouble with my phone. <laughs> uh, my name's Carl. Um, I was calling about that house that was for sale. Is it still available? It's off the market, so thank you for calling. Oh, you sold it? Okay. Uh, well, no worries. Well, listen, uh, do you know anybody? Ah. Okay. Don't worry about him. Resume. He wanted too much for that property anyway. All right. So a lot of times what you want to do when, uh, if you're doing a multi-dial situation like this, and again, I would highly recommend you use the Red X, right? The Red X is the best dialer I've used. I mean, I've I've used Mojo, I've used Vulcan, and I'm going to tell you, uh, I was partial, I'm not going to lie to you, uh, I was partial to Mojo for years. I really liked Mojo. Uh, but the problem with Mojo that I had was their data wasn't good enough. I liked Mojo because of their dialer. I like the fact that they dialed three at a time, right? And it was my fault. This is Susie. Hi, Susie. This is Carl Krenzel. How are you? Fine, thank you. I was calling about your house for sale. Is it still available? No, it uh, sold on Saturday. Oh, I uh, believe it. The inspection period. Oh, well, hallelujah. Good for you. Okay, well, great. Well, listen, I'm, I'm sorry to hear for the circumstances, but uh, I'm glad to see that you got it resolved. Uh, do you happen to know okay. uh, of anybody else who's got a property that I could buy for cash? No, I oh, don't. All right. I, well, listen, no worries. Well, listen, I hope you have a great day and I, and I hope your inspection goes well, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Now, believe it or not, um, there once was a time when when somebody would tell me something like that as a sell by owner, uh, I would kind of put it in a in a little file, right? <laughs> and and if they were pending as a for sale by owner, I would keep them in a special little file because I knew, right, more often than not, that they'd fail in the inspection period. And when they did, then I would just call them. So in a typical situation like that, where let's say that they say, well, gosh, you know, we're in the inspection period, you know, I'd be, oh, okay, great. No problem. You know, maybe ask them a question. Hello. Hi, Steve. Yeah. Oh, hi, Steve. Carl Krenzel. How are you today? How can I help you? Yes, sir. I was calling about the house you had for sale. Is it still available? Yes, sir. Outstanding. Outstanding. Okay. Well, listen, I'm a broker here in town who buys property. I was just calling to see how I could help you with this property. Uh, is there any way you can give me a call back maybe about an hour or two because I'm right in the middle of something? Yeah, that's no worries. Same number? Yes, sir. Okay. No problem. Will do. Talk to you soon. Coincidentally, uh, this is also another good reason to use uh, this dialer uh, because you have the callback facility in here. So it's just a simple number, um, or I'm sorry, a simple button you press. When do you want to call them back? We're calling back in about an hour or so. So that makes it about, uh, what, 10, just say uh, 10, 20, boom. Okay, high priority, call back about for sale by owner oh okay now cool thing about this uh as i was saying i liked the mojo dialer but the data wasn't that good and it was it was my impression at the time that uh, the red x as much as i like their data and and the system that they had it was my impression that the storm dialer that they had only had a one dialer capacity and for me that's a deal breaker if you're dialing one dial one line at a time Ugh, gosh, you're going to be here forever, right? You need to have something that will dial three lines at a time. And that's why when I found out that that Storm Dialer, uh, the one that the Red X uses, the, the, the Red X produces, uh, actually has a three-line dialer. Oh, well, guess what? I'm on board. I'm all about it. Because now, okay, you got all the data, which is awesome. Okay, the data is super good. Uh, not to mention you get uh, pre-foreclosure data. Oh, boom. We're done with all those uh, for sale by owners now. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Who do we need to call now? Whoops. Drop the phone. All right. So we called all the expireds. 
all the for sale by owners, all the for rent by owners. Now that's something Mojo didn't have. Mojo didn't have for rent by owners. And that, that drove me nuts, right? The pre foreclosures. I don't recall Mojo having pre foreclosures, right? They had for sale by owners. They had expireds, uh, canceled, but I don't recall them having pre foreclosures, right? And they also had, uh, like this, uh, the, the, I don't even remember what they call it in Mojo, but in uh, in the Red X, they call it the Geo Leads. And the Geo Leads is what we're going to jump into right now because we've already called all the for rent by owners, all the for sale by owners, all the canceleds, all the expireds. Yeah, so we've called through, and, and yeah, I think we said the pre foreclosures. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, all the typical suspects, we've called through all of them. Okay. And we've taken three lines at a time to call through these people. We've been unable to set an appointment. Now, if you're a realtor and an investor in this situation, it's 917 in the morning, you haven't been prospecting for very long and bless God, you don't have an appointment. You don't have any leads that you found. You know, if, if you're following along like we've talked about, then you got to remember the, the sixth step to success, if you will, right, is to uh, start every day at zero. So you got to recall, think about from the perspective, if you will, you know what? I don't have any leads. I don't have any uh, sales. I don't have any anything, right? I don't have nothing. Well, in this case, it's true. We don't have any leads from today. We don't have any prospects from today. We don't have any uh, any uh, appointments set. So what do we got to do? We got to dial even more, right? Because if you didn't have somebody else to call, Okay, you're going to be out there knocking on doors. It's going to be 105 degrees here pretty soon. Or you're going to be holding an open house, in which case you're going to maybe meet maybe four people. Okay, you're going to be putting out all these signs. You're going to sit for four hours. You're not going to find anybody. You might as well get out there, get active, and try to find somebody to buy or sell. And that's what we're fixing to do. So while this thing's on hold for a moment, okay, I'm going to jump into another story very briefly for you. It says new home sales sank 7.8% in May despite a big drop in the mortgage rates. Now, this is coming to us from CNBC. So I take it with a little bit of grain of salt, obviously, because they got a little bit of a slant, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but Diana Olick over there at in a CNBN, a CNBC says, uh, there's really three key points to take away from this article. First, Sales of newly built homes felt 7.8% in May from April, and there were 3.7% uh, lower than in May according to the U.S. Census, okay? Now, what this number represents is signed contracts, not closings. When we're talking about pendings, not closed. So when you start talking about pendings, being pendings being down in the new home, uh, in, 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 in the new home uh, sales ratio, right? That's, uh, that's, that's, not, that's not good, right? The average rate on a popular 30-year fixed mortgage started May at 4.29, according to Mortgage News Daily. And then ended the month at 3.94. Okay, a sizable savings on a monthly payment, especially given in a higher income price. Third thing that you want to take away from this is that the lower mortgage rates have not unleashed a new wave of demand. Okay, those three things you really want to, and I'm going to read some more of this so you kind of get some, get some context. Okay, but the takeaways you want to start listening for here as we start talking, first, Sales of new homes went down 7.8% in May. Okay, and that's pending contracts. So the amount of people who are going out and writing contracts and saying, yeah, I want to buy a new home, gone down 7.8% in May from April. April, May, 7.8% went down, right? That's the first thing. Second thing you want to learn, okay, take away from this article, is that the rate, the interest rate, 4.9, or I'm sorry, 4.29 went down to 3.9, 3.94, okay? That's a pretty good chunk on your interest rate that went down. Third thing you want to take away, that that uh, mortgage drop or that lower, lower mortgage rate, if you will, okay, they thought would, you know, spur up some demand. People will say, oh gosh, the interest rates are low. We can buy a bigger house for more money or uh, less money now. Well, guess what? Didn't really work out the way they thought it was going to. Hmm. Hmm. What does this mean in light of all the other things that we've been watching? 
You've been following along on this podcast, following along on the Sell More Homes Now on YouTube. You've been hearing me talk about what Zillow's been saying for 33 out of the 35 markets. I don't have to say it anymore. You should be able to repeat it right along with me, right? Realtor, you know, the National Association of Realtors, year over year growth for the last seven years, then went down for the first quarter, right? Now let's read the article. Home buyers pulled away from builders in May, even as affordability improved thanks to lower mortgage rates. Sales of newly built homes fell 7.8% from April. They were 3.7% lower than in May, according to U.S. Census. This number represents signed contracts, not closing. So it's a very recent indicator of buyers out shopping during the month. Okay, so you, you got people right now in the marketplace. That's what they're, that's what they're buying and, and, and they're kind of, turning away from new, 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 new homes. Okay. It says the decline in sales came even as home shoppers were watching the mortgage rates fall. All right. The lower mortgage rates have not unleashed a new wave of demand says Buck Horn, a home building analyst and uh, senior vice president at Raymond James Horn pointed to rising competition from the increasing supply of existing homes for sale, especially in the markets where builders are most active. Supply of existing homes for sale is up a striking 85% in Las Vegas annually, 52% in Seattle, and 21% in Dallas, according to Dorn, uh, Horn. Supply in Southern California is also up in double digits. He says, quote, it's harder for the builders to compete against resale inventory that is priced significantly below where their asking price is now. Okay. He says the median, uh, the median price of a newly built home sold in May was 308,000 down 2.7% annually. Wait a minute. Hold it up. Stop the presses. Time out. Wait a minute. Okay. Just a few minutes ago. All right. Here we were just literally seconds ago, talking about how the prices have started to kind of tip in the first quarter, according to Realtor.com. According to Zillow, 33 of the 35 markets have gone down. And now you got this guy saying, guess what? The median price of a newly built home sold in May was 308000 which is down 2.7% annually. Hmm. All these people are talking about how great the economy is and how wonderful things are, and I agree. But what are you seeing on the ground? What are you seeing in reality? What is really going on in the marketplace? Well, builders, it says, are not necessarily lowering their base prices, but they are offering more incentives, all right? The drop in median price is likely due to a shift in the mix of homes that are selling. All right, that's why the median can kind of be tricky because you never really know. But the share of homes sold in the $200,000 to $299,000 increased in May, and more buyers on the lower end could shift that lower median down, right? So if you've got a lot of upper end property, six, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand, and it's not selling, you got a bunch of two hundred dollars to $300,000 property that is selling, well, that's going to pull your median down, right? <laughs> So what's happening is this indicates that the buyers, are, I'm sorry, the builders are starting to respond to these entry level buyers. That's what's really going on. Okay. So what you're starting to see in May is really more than likely attributed to recent events, uh, concerns about tariffs and other events that could slow global economic growth. The growth. That's what Danielle Hale, the chief economist for Realtor.com says. Well, I don't know about that. It always seems to me like Realtor.com and The Economist and everybody that they have over there have all these fantastic reasons about why things are happening on a global scale as to why that's stopping the sales locally. Could it be, maybe, that there is an over amount, an oversupply of homes that are for sale? And then when you've got properties that are on the market pooling, competing with builders, how many times have you as a realtor been in that situation where you've been with somebody and you told them, hey, you're competing with a home buyer, I'm sorry, a home builder, you need to drop your price. Yeah, your builder can go ahead and complete that property and make it look beautiful and have a brand new property, but it's going to be a little bit more and it's going to take a few months to get. 
or you could sell your property now a little bit cheaper perhaps and they could have it now and that's the problem that they're having right so the late the nation's largest home builder by revenue lennar reported second quarter earnings on tuesday morning and slow and showed a slight drop in the average selling price new orders were flat despite the rot the drop in rates okay lennar lennar their second quarter earnings dropped their new orders flat even though the interest rates have dropped they're not selling any more homes than they were in the first quarter right but he says okay the executive chairman you know expressed optimism well of course he should that's what they all do that's what you're paid to do if if, if you were the executive uh chairman of a company and you came out and said yep the, the sky is falling well they'd fire you that day <laughs> he said it's a well-documented market pause in the second half of 2018 set the stage for more moderate home price increases and lower interest rates which stimulated both affordability and demand leading home buyers back to the market that's what said stuart miller yes yeah, stuart miller said that okay how do you explain this stuart the available supply of newly built homes rose markedly in May to 6.4 months worth at the current sales pace. Do you know what that means in realtor speak? Your absorption rate for brand new homes is 6.4%. If you didn't build another home in the United States at all, not a single one, you stopped every home building you stopped right now. Okay, fire everybody. Tell the concrete pourer to stop pouring the concrete. Tell the, the, the plumber to stop plumbing, the electrician to stop doing the electricity. You fire every single person on there and you just sell the existing inventory you have. Guess what? It's going to take you over six and a half months to sell every single one you have. Every one. Six months. Now, let me ask you a question, guys, gals, YouTube land, sell more homes and the redpillinvestor.com folks. Tell me, if your marketplace suddenly had six months worth of inventory on the market, how would you feel? Hmm? Would you feel as though that was good? That was okay? Tell you what I would feel. That is a normal market. Yeah, that's why you take a six-month listing because things take six months to sell sometimes. <laughs> he said, okay, that uh, in contrast, the supply of existing homes for sale was at 4.3 months at the end of May. Look, when we're talking about absorption rate, nationwide absorption rate, how long does it take to sell every freaking home we've got on the planet, uh, in the country right now, if there was no other homes put on the market and no other homes built? If the existing homes across the United States, the average is 4.3 months at the end of May, that's for existing homes. Hello, your listing's not selling. Are you finding that the flips you're uh, putting on the market are taking a few extra months to sell? Hello. Welcome to the podcast, <laughs> right? It's taken 4.3 months on average for existing homes to sell. Okay. You take brand new homes, their average is 6.4 months. Why? Because new homes come at a price premium for existing homes. And today's buyers, especially these younger millennials, are finding it real hard to afford new construction. I mean, think about that new family. Look, you've had a client like that yourself in the last two weeks, I guarantee. Right? That young millennial wants to buy that new home. Oh my gosh, all the bells and whistles. It looks so pretty. I just love it. Tiny little postage stamp lot. You know, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't believe you want to live here. Right? And, and they want to live there but they can't afford it. So what do they do? They go buy a rehab that's been really done, right? And make the best. New home sales sink 7.8% in May. That is news you need to know. And if you didn't know it, well, now you do. All right, let's get back into the dialing. We took a minute to, to go ahead and go over that story, a little bit of commentary. So let's go ahead and jump back into the dialing. The 
the thing went ahead and uh, went out on me. So we're going to go ahead and press dial again. Uh, this time we're calling through. Uh, oh, goodness. Where am I calling this time? I don't even remember. Oh, yeah. We're calling through an area that uh, we just sold a property in. Right. So what we're going to do right now, we're calling 97 homes. There's 171 phone numbers. So what I've told the computer to do is pull up. Um, properties that are older, I'm sorry, that have been owned for longer than five years that are uh, within this particular neighborhood uh, of where we sold a home. Okay. Welcome to Storm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call these people up because essentially what you want to do, regardless if you're a, uh, a realtor, wholesaler, you know, whatever your position is in the real estate game, you know, you want to make sure that you take the time uh, to call uh, people who are just around the areas that you've listed or sold or your company is listed or sold, uh, because what you're going to find more often than not is people will say, well, gosh, you know, if they got that for that, well, then I could get X for mine, <laughs> right? I mean, that's what they tend to say. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about a property uh, that we recently uh, sold. I held this property open for this agent uh, not too long ago, uh, right? So I'm pretty familiar with the property. I know the neighborhood. Uh, I know where it's at. I know the particulars about the house. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and make a few calls and see what we can do about finding some of these ready, willing, and able sellers because as you know, uh, if one person saw that sign, they probably had it in their heart that they wanted to sell uh, or at least would be interested. All right. So now let's go ahead and call these people up. All right. Open back the right window. And here we go. Dial. Okay. So we're dialing again. Turn the phone up a little bit. All right. So the third story we're going to go through while we are uh, waiting for people to pick up on this phone. I set my notes right there so I won't forget. There we go. Third story is uh, investors are buying more of the U.S. housing market than ever before. And their interest poses a challenge for millennials and other first-time homebuyers. Now, this is an article uh, dated uh, June 27th. Hello? Hi, this is Carl Krenzel. How are you today? Good. Um, I'm not sure if I have the right place. I was calling for the owners of a property on San Sebastian Drive. Have I got the right place? No. Oh, gosh. Okay. I was looking for the, the Ware residence. Have, do you do you know anything about the Ware residence or 3601 San Sebastian Drive? Do you do you know anything about that or am I just way off base? No, I don't know anything about that address. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. I'm sorry. I guess I got the totally wrong number then. All right. Well, listen, I hope you have a great day anyway, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Sounded like a sounded like a kid to me. I'm not. I wasn't really anxious to call him and or start really prospecting to him because he sounded like a kid to me. Uh, it says that uh, investors are buying more of U.S. Hello. Hi, this is Colonel Krenzel. How are you today? Do I have, uh, who are you asking for? Yes, ma'am. I'm not sure if I have the right place. I was looking for the Lecter's residence. They own some property over there in Cayagua Verde. Have I got the right place? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Well, I got some great news for you. Uh, my name is Carl Krenzel. I'm a broker over here at Sotheby's International Realty. Uh, as you may or may not know, we recently had a property that was for sale over there at 3640 North Cayagua Verde. I I'm not sure if you were driving. Yeah, the other side of river. Yeah. Uh -huh, that's, that's, yeah, that's the one. The uh huh. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you were driving around the area, but we, we had that property uh, on the market. We sold it in 16 days. Uh, it was a 2,300 square foot place with three bedrooms and three baths and a two car garage. And uh, the, we, we've got a lot of folks who are still wanting to live in the area. So we're kind of reaching out to the neighbors. Do you know of anybody in that area who might be open to selling their property right now? 
not that I know. What did you sell that thirty six forty for? Uh, yes, ma'am. 425,000. I apologize. I thought I, I thought I mentioned that. No, it was 100, 425,000. Yeah, we were, we were asking 420. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying we were asking 429 for it and uh, we sold it in just over two weeks. And, uh, and because of that, obviously, I mean, the, the market that we're in right now, uh, if, uh, if we have a property on the market, if it's any any good, it, it sells relatively quickly. And unfortunately, we have a lot of folks who are st- still wanting to live in the area, you know. But we got, we'll have one happy seller and two crying buyers. You know what I mean? That's the way it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we're, we're at this time we're not interested uh, at this point. No. No problem. Do you happen to know of anybody else in the area that I should talk to who might be interested uh, in an all cash offer on an unwanted home? No. No worries. No worries at all. All right. Well, listen, I appreciate you taking my call and I hope you have a wonderful day. Okay. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Resume. All right. You got to ask yourself, how many people, how many people would you be willing to call? <laughs> Hello. Hi. Sorry about that. I was having a little trouble with my phone. Uh, my name's Carl. How are you today? What's this about? Well, I was calling. A, I'm not sure if I have the right person, so I apologize in advance. Are you the fellow who owns that property at 3591 Cayagua Verde? What is this about? Well, I got some good news for you. Uh, we actually sold the property down the street from you at 3649 uh, North Cayagua Verde. I'm a, my name's Carl. I was with uh, Sotheby's International Realty. You might have seen that property if you were driving around the area. We we sold it for four twenty five. John, <laughs> that's totally my fault. All right, no problem. But Tim is not interested. Resume. All right. Yeah how how many people would you talk to? That's a good question. How many people would you talk to if 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 I go gave- Hello. Oh, hi there. This is Carl. How are you today? Carl with. Oh, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. My name's Carl Krenzel. Uh, I I might owe you uh, an apology. Are you the lady who owns that home on uh, San Sebastian Drive? Is this a solicitation? Oh no, ma'am. No, actually, I was going to give you some good news. Uh, my name again. Ah, no answer. All right. How many calls? So let's see. Let's just play a game. $425,000. Okay. That's what this property sold for. Uh, let's uh, take a look at the cops. Let's see the, the cooperative fee on there was 3%. Okay. That was the co-op fee. So $425,000 times 3%. Hmm. Let's see. How much is that? 425, carry the two, minus the three. That's a lot of money. (laughs) I don't know how you calculate it, but that's a lot of money. $425,000 times 3%. All right, that was how much? Hello? Hello? Elizabeth? Uh, no. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> I might have the wrong number. I was looking for the Sparks residence on San Sebastian. Have I got the right place? No. Nope. Oh my gosh. Do you know? Any, do you know anything about the Sparkses or or the house on San Sebastian? Do you know anything about that? Or am I just like way off? Why? Yeah. No problem. Well, the only reason why I was asking was because uh, I got. I'm a broker over here at Sotheby's International Realty. We sold the a property around the corner from them at 3640 Cayagua Verde. Super happy seller because we sold his place in 16 days, but I got a couple crying buyers because they, they want a house in that area. And I was just calling to see if maybe she considered selling it. Do you do you know if they considered selling uh, that yeah. property? Uh, not a chance. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame them. That's a great little neighborhood in there. No worries. Well, listen, do you know of anybody else in that area who I ought to talk to who might be open to that idea? Oh, geez, there's a couple up the road that you might want to try. Okay. I'm not too sure. Okay. All right, no worries. Well, listen, I appreciate you taking the time, and I hope you have a great day anyway, okay? All right, thank you. Mm -hmm, Thank you. Bye-bye. 
right? Boom. Um, so let's see. Hi, my name's Carl Krenzel. How are you? What are you, what are you calling about? Well, I'm not sure if I have the right place, so I owe you an apology in advance. I was looking for the owners of that property on Cayagua Verde at 59, uh, 5919, the showered. Uh, yeah. Is that, is that yes, your? Yes, yes. Oh, perfect. Okay. Well, I got some great news yes. for you. Uh, uh, my name's Carl Krenzel. I'm a uh, broker over here at Sotheby's International Realty. We just sold the property yeah, down. I, don't know. I know you don't. I wasn't calling about that. I was just telling you. Ah, boy, I'll tell you. You can't get frustrated. You just can't get frustrated because people, they get harassed all day long. They get, I mean, harassed. And if you kind of approach this with the idea that you're trying to sell them something, it's not going to work out too well. But what I think you probably, your best mindset is to be. Hello. Hi, Marvin. Oh, okay. No worries. Well, listen, uh, my name's. Calling. Yeah, no problem. My name's Carl Krenzel. I was just giving, uh, giving y'all a quick call. Do you folks still own that property over there on River Road? Hello? Yes, sir. Do, do you folks still own that property on River Road? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you... yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, my name is Carl, and I'm calling because I've got some good news for you. I'm from Sotheby's International Realty. We... Oh, I can't hear you. Okay. How's that? Is that better? Can you hear me now? Okay, great. Well, my name's Carl. Uh, we just sold a property not far from you on Cayagua Verde in 16 days for 425000 But we've got a couple of people who want to live in the area. Do you know anybody who's interested in selling their home? Uh, I'm getting ready to sell it, so I wouldn't be interested. Thank you. You're getting ready to sell it? Okay, we're going to call him again. Hang on a second. We're going to redial this dude. Let's see, hang on. Yeah, we're we're redialing this dude. Hi Marvin, I I misunderstood you. Did you say you were still you were going to sell the house? I gave it to my daughter. She's going to sell it when she's ready to move. Oh, oh. <laughs> Okay, I misunderstood you. Okay, all right. Well, listen, no problem. Do you know anybody else I'll in that? Time. No problem. Do you know anybody else who's got a house? All right, no problem. Boom. All right. So what we're gonna do? Like that is not interested, obviously. Yeah. So don't be afraid to call people back uh, if they hang up on you or something like that. Oh gosh, I thought we just got disconnected. <laughs> right. Um. Yeah. So four hundred twenty-five thousand times three percent. Um, that's a lot of money, right? 12,000 bucks or something like that. That was, I don't know, 12, 13,000, whatever that was paid in commission on this deal that we're calling about right now. Okay. Some buyer's agent right now is $12,000 richer minus her split or whatever it is with the company that she worked at. Huh. Hi, Mr. Kamel. Yeah. Oh, hi, this is Carl Krenzel. How are you today? Hi, thank you. Um, uh, this is who? My name is Carl, Carl Krenzel. How are you today? Hi, thank you. Um, the reason why I'm calling is uh, we just sold a property not far from yours over there at 3640 North Cay Agua Verde. It, yeah. yeah, it was a 2300 square foot place with three bedrooms and three baths. We sold it in 16 days for 425000 yeah. We've got a one, okay. we got one super happy seller but a couple crying buyers because they missed out on the deal. Do you know anybody in that neighborhood who might be considering selling their property? Uh, not that I know of. I have not a great contact with my neighbors. No, uh, okay. H yeah, have you considered... Sorry, I don't know if they have any plans. No problem. Have you considered selling your property on Kai Agua Verde? Not at this point, no. Yeah, I don't blame you. That's a great looking property. H how long have you lived yeah. there? Oh, since 66 or so. Oh, my goodness. 66. You've seen yeah. a lot of changes then, huh? Oh, yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you move from? Yeah. Were, were you here in town when you moved back there? Sorry? Well, were you here in town? I mean, in 66, there probably wasn't much out there right then at that point, right? Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, that's, uh, things changed since then. How, how did you end up in that neighborhood? Were you... Uh, 
a gentleman with an Italian last name uh -huh. uh, right next door to me, and but there weren't too many houses around. Oh my goodness, were you were you here in town when you moved out there, or did you come from someplace else? No, I've been living here since uh, '66 or so. Oh my goodness! Wow. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. if uh, if you were to move, where do you think you'd go next? Uh, I don't know. I think I'm happy here. <laughs> I hear you there. I hear you. All right. Well, listen, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me, Mr. Kamel. You have a wonderful day. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. $12,000 to one agent minus their split. How many calls would you take? How many calls would you make to find the seller? Great, because I'm on the other line. I'm sorry I missed your call. I will call you back shortly. Chances Thanks. are, uh, you know, I don't know what the listing agent listed the property for, but I mean, if they're offering out 3%, well, then traditionally it's half of whatever they're making. So he's probably making 3% as well. As a listing agent, you're making $12,000 to help expose this property to the buyers and then negotiate the transaction to the close. That's what your job is. Hi, this is Carl Krenzel. How are you? Good, thank you. I, I'm not sure if I have the right person. I apologize. Are, are, is this the Manriquez residence over there on Rio Verde Vista? Yes, it is. Oh, perfect. Okay. Well, I got some good news for you. Uh, my name is Carl Krenzel. Uh, I'm with Sotheby's International. We just sold a property not far from you over there at 3640 North Cayagua Verde. Uh, it was a 2,300 square foot place. We sold it in 16 days for 425,000. I was just calling to see if you happen to think about selling your property at all. Have you? No. Nope. Yeah. Not gonna sell. I don't blame you. That's a great looking property right there. Yeah. The only reason why I'm asking is we got a, obviously a super happy seller, but we've got a couple crying buyers because they missed <laughs> missed out. Uh, do you know of anybody else in that neighborhood? Uh, that would be interested in selling their property or, or be open to a, just a quick sale kind of off the market sort of thing? No, not really. No. Hmm. Okay. No problem. And, and can you think of anybody here in town who's got an unwanted home that I could buy for cash? Well, I, I, have to, I can't, but I have a very good friend realtor that I would go through if I did. Oh, yo, well, that's fine with me, but I mean, I, I don't care about your realtor. Do you know anybody who's got a house I could buy? That's my thing. <laughs> I have a very good friend who I would give that to. He would buy it? I'm talking about me buying it. Yeah, that's what I thought. See, the problem with people, okay, look, I, I'm not trying to be critical here, okay? But the, the fundamental problem that I found with people when you're, when you're talking on the phone is that they have a set of preconceived notions. Okay. And you, you have to be exceptionally careful in the way you prospect to people so that they can hear and understand exactly what it is you're trying to say. Oh gosh. Ah, uh, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry about that guys. Oh, oof. sorry about that. So, um, there is a uh, there's a set amount of preconceived notions that people have in their head about the way things are, are are okay and you have to be exceptionally careful about the way you say things so that you can make sure they hear you clearly so they understand where you're coming from and Por favor, deje su mensaje para and many times Many times, you know, they're not necessarily hearing what you're saying because of their own preconceived notions, their own preconceived thoughts. So when I said, well, do you know? Please leave your message for. Do you know anybody who's got an unwanted home I could buy for cash? Well, I don't. But if I did, I, I would tell my realtor. Okay, great. I, I'm, I'm okay with you telling your realtor. Tell your realtor. Tell your mom. Tell Jesus. Tell anybody you want to. I'm okay with that. But do you know anybody who'd be interested in selling it to me directly. Well, if I did, I would give it to my realtor. You see, the, 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 the disconnect is he thinks I'm talking about listing property. 
And that's my fault because I'm not clearly expressing I need to, I'm, I'm looking to buy in that particular moment, right? So if you're not going to, uh, I'm sorry, if they're not hearing you, okay, if they're not hearing what you're saying, like this fellow was just saying, try saying it in a different way or the same thing again, right? Uh, because many times what you'll discover is you just got to kind of break through somebody's preconceived notions in their head about what they think is, is going on. And, and they're like, oh, okay. Now, in his case, when you confronted him with it, well, no, I'm actually looking to buy. Do you know anybody who'd be willing to buy? Well, it just hangs up. Oh, okay. That's fine. You know, that's, that's just, that's no big deal. I'd, I'd probably hang up on me faster Yay. than. Associate, this is Lisa. Can I help you? Oh my gosh, you know what? I got the wrong number. I apologize. Oh, no <laughs> Sorry, have a great day. No, no, mm -hmm. no, Take care. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Um, all right, there we go. Resume. There we go. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't talk, I wouldn't talk to me either. I mean, to be quite honest with you, I mean. I am probably one of the worst people to try and part telemarket to because I keep my phone on, you know, do not disturb most of the time. I screen most of my calls. Uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, if you call me, you know, you need to get my attention pretty quickly because otherwise if you're, if you're trying to sell me something, I'll be like, Oh, okay. You're from the, uh-huh. And you're from the, and you're with the, Oh, okay. And I'll hang up. I mean, that's typically what I do. I, I don't even give somebody 10 seconds on the phone. <laughs> right. I mean, you really got to be compelling to get me to listen. Right. And and that's the way you want to think about it. Hello. Hello. Oh, hi. My name's Carl. How are you? H Hello, Ms. Darmer. Hello. See, that's the other problem right there. I sound too good. Uh, it's too much like a recording. People hang up on me super quick. So uh, investors are buying more of the U.S. housing market more than ever before. This is from the Wall Street Journal. Um, this is written to us by Laura Casisto. Said that the share of investor purchases of U.S. homes has climbed to an all-time high. A sign that rising home prices have done little to dampen the demand for flipping homes or turning them into single-family rentals. Can I help you? Boy, you know what? I think I got the wrong number altogether. I apologize. <laughs> Have a great day. That was a out of state number realty company. That's not how what I want. Okay. Says that. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Says that. Uh, hi, this is Carl Krenzel. How are you? Okay, who's this? My name is Carl, Carl Krenzel. I'm not sure if I have the right person, so I apologize in advance. I was actually looking for the owners of the Espices, uh, I'm sorry, the Espices over there on Vista de la Cima. Is that your property, sir? What property is that, sir? Oh, yes, sir, 3913 North Vista de la Cima. Is that your home, sir? Oh, perfect. Okay. Well, I got some good news for you. Don't worry. It's not a sales call. <laughs> My name's Carl Krenzel. I'm a broker over here at Sotheby's International Real Estate. Uh, I was reaching out to you today because we sold your neighbor's property over there at 3640 uh, North Calle Agua Verde. It was a, a little bit, well, a lot smaller than your place. It was 2,300 square foot place uh, with only three bedrooms and three baths. We sold it in 16 days uh, for 425000 Seller is super happy, obviously, because he's sold. Uh, but we've got a couple of people who are kind of crying because they missed out. So we're reaching out to the neighbors. Do you do you know of anybody in that neighborhood who who might be open to just a, a quick sale, something off the market, maybe under the radar? Do you know Do you know anybody who'd be interested uh, in that? No, nope. uh, I would. I know a person who has a lot for sale if they want to build their own home. Oh, really? Okay. All right. Uh, about how much are they trying to get for that lot? You think? Uh, well, it's uh, on the tax. Tax record is worth one hundred twenty thousand. Uh, actually, it's my lot. Oh, okay. All right, gotcha. All right, right beside my house. Oh, no kidding. Interesting. Uh, okay. It's uh, thirty thirty nine nineteen, Mister Taylor, same month. Okay. All right. Well, that's good to know. So anyway, uh, we 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 probably uh, we probably well, like I said, it's probably appraised at one hundred twenty thousand. Uh, probably around the eighties, eighty something, maybe. Okay. Uh, uh, I guess or we listen to an offer, I suppose. But uh, about but how big a of a... Lot. It's got all the utilities to it. It's, it's sloped, but uh, 
as are all the lots in this subdivision. About how big of uh, how big is the lot? Huh? About how big is the it's, lot? It's it's a commercial acre. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. It's good deal. About thirty-seven, thirty-eight hundred square feet. Okay. Good deal. And like I said, it's uh, you got to build a house to, to fit to suit the lot, which of course, which is the case with all the lots in this subdivision. So, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't be a hard lot to build on by any means. You know, to have a driveway that slopes down to the back of the lot to build the house on it. So. But you can look at it on Zillow. You can see it. So. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, right, I'll, I'll certainly, also. yeah, I'll certainly do that. Um, do you, do you happen okay, to know the if. The house at 3913 isn't for sale. <laughs> no problem. Do you. Uh... I don't know of any other ones. Okay. That anybody I know of. All right. For sale, so. Well, fair enough. Well, Mr. So, Espich, anyway. I appreciate you taking the time to talk with okay. me today. And well, I will. I, you sell the lot. I will take a look. Thank you. Okay. Have Bye. a wonderful okay. day. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. Right. Now that's, uh, I'll be honest with you, is probably not something that I would really be interested in because uh, I've dealt with a lot of land and land here in Tucson is not uh, hard, to, <laughs> hard to find. There's just an awful, awful lot of land uh, for sale. However, uh, it is something that somebody said that uh, he is interested in selling. So vacant land next to his interested in potentially selling. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep that. All right. We're going to mark it down as an interested kind of lead. And the reason why is because you want to be aware, right? You want to be aware of things like this, because when things like this happen, you never really know how it, it's going to play out, right? Hello, you reached TV Slade. I am unavailable right now. I will call you back as soon as possible. Please leave a message. Um, so it's, it's, it's highly unlikely uh, that I'll do anything with it, but um, let's see here. I'm trying to close my notes section here. Resume. There we go. Uh, a number that does not accept solicitations. If you are a solicitor, please add this number to your do not call list and hang up now. Otherwise, please press one or stay on the line. Okay, hang on. I get my thing back together here. There we go. Resume. Okay, so my uh, I have my script open, my notes open, and everything was open at the same time on my computer. Here it was very difficult for me to to get it all sorted out. I had to had to sort it out there for a minute. It took me a minute. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you want to when people tell you stuff like this, you know, hey, I got this lot, for, you know, that I would be interested in selling or whatever. You want to take note of that because it's this kind of stuff right here that makes you valuable. You know, because people all the time want to know about secret inventory or hello hello oh hi this is carl how are you is this um, is this hi, alex you, carl. yeah is this alex yes oh hi alex uh, yes. my name yeah my name's carl i was calling about your property on vista de la cima do you still happen to own that oh yeah uh -huh. Okay, cool. I got some great news for you. Uh, again, my name's Carl. I'm a broker over here at Sotheby's International Realty. We just sold a property down the way from you over there at 3640 uh, Calle Agua Verde. It was a, a 2300 square uh -huh. foot, 2300 square foot place. We sold it in 16 days for 425,000. So the seller obviously is super happy. Uh, but the, uh, the, we got a couple buyers in the area wanting to buy They're They're unhappy because they missed out. Uh, do you happen to know of anybody in that area who's got an unwanted home that they'd be interested in selling? Uh, no, not at all. I've got, all, all I have is a lot there. So, oh, um, you do? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Hey, real yeah. quick. Um, this is sort yeah. of unrelated, but are, do you happen to be related in any way to Wendy Carajolios? Oh yeah. She's my wife. Is that a fact? Well, God bless yeah. your heart. Well, interesting. That's I know her, and uh, oh, really? Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember. Was she? Uh, is she is she still an agent? Oh yeah, she is. Yeah, she's it, with Omni right now. Omni. Okay, I want to say 
I met her, and I might be wrong, but I want to say I met her back when I was at Long. Was she? Didn't she used to be at Long? Oh yeah, way back. Yeah, yeah. that's when I met her. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, okay and yeah. Her. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I thought I thought that was that was kind of like my name's Krenzel, and there's just not too many Krenzels around. I figured Kara <laughs> Halios. I figured it uh, certainly uh, you probably know her in some way. So, all right, well, cool. Well, listen, hey, I appreciate you taking the time to take my call today, and you have a great right, day, sure. okay? Yeah, you too. All right. Thanks, okay. brother. Right. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Now, listen, this is, uh, this is a really good example of, uh, you know, when you do this every day, okay, you're going to come across certain people, certain situations, certain things. So, for example, now I know he uh, Al has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Alex, Five, uh, two, I know zero. now, anyway, is married to Wendy. Uh, Wendy is a real estate agent here in town. She's a great agent. I know her well. She's a good person, um, does good business, right? Uh, so now it's these situations where you know, you're going to talk to somebody and they're going to be like, Hello. Oh, hi there. This is Carl Krenzel. How are you today? Okay. Um, I'm not sure if I have the right place. I was calling for the Foltzes. Uh, they own some property over there on Country Club Vista. Is that your property? Yep. Oh, perfect. Yep. Oh, perfect. Okay. Well, I got some great news for you. Uh, I'm a broker over here at Sotheby's International Realty. We just sold a property not far from you uh, over there at 36. Do you have $2 million? Well, I have one. And I'm not interested in buying your home. I was just trying to give you some good information. Does it cost me $2 million to give you good information? Go drop dead. I would love to, because then I'd be with the Lord. Would you be with me? <laughs> I'll take that as a not interested. All right. Well, guys, I was praying that I would go, but as it is, I'm still here. Hello? Walter Ramsley, please leave a message. I mean, you would think, honestly, that people would have something more creative to say than go drop dead. Because if Hello. I... Sandra? Hello. Oh, Don? Hello. Oh, hi, Don? Yes. Oh, hi, Don. Carl Krenzel, how are you today? Good. Um, you, you don't know me, and I might have the wrong place, so I apologize in advance. Uh, do you and Sandra still own that property over there on Rio Verde Vista? Oh, perfect. Okay. Well, I got some great news for you. Uh, I'm a, I'm a broker over here at Sotheby's International Realty. We just sold a property down the way from you uh, over there at 3640 North Cayagua Verde. It was a uh, 2,300 square foot place. We sold it in 16 days for 425,000. We the, the, obviously the homeowner is super happy because it's sold, uh, but we've got a couple buyers crying in their beer because they missed out. Uh, do you happen to know of anybody in that area who might be open to selling their property? No, I sure don't. Yeah, I don't blame you. That's a great little neighborhood in <laughs> a great little neighborhood in there. Every, everybody's been telling me no today. <laughs> right. Okay, no problem. Right. Yeah, have you considered selling your property at all? Yeah, I don't blame you. Like I said, if it was me, you'd have to drag me out of their feet first. I hear you. About how long have you guys lived there? Uh, 34 years. Holy cow, 34 years. Oh, my goodness. I bet you've seen all kinds of changes, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Where'd you move from? Were you here in town? Yeah. Oh, no kidding. What part of town? Because like 34 years ago, there there, there was like virtually nothing. <laughs> virtually nothing there. <laughs> Southeast side. Oh, no kidding. Oh, that's kind of where I grew up from. I went to Santa Rita myself. All right, well, good deal. Well, uh, if you were to move, Mr. Collins, when do you think that would be? Oh, probably when I die. Well, let's hope that's a good long time away. All right? Yeah. You have uh, a great day, okay? Stay out of that heat. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Now, that right there uh, is an example of just using the Mike Ferry Just Listed script, right? Um with the exception, well, I wouldn't say that. That's probably not true. Uh, you know, it's kind of a mixture because he doesn't, the Mike Ferry script doesn't say the homeowner is happy and we got people crying in their beer, right? That's a line that I picked up. Hello? Hello? Oh, hi. This is Carl. How are you? 
I'm afraid you have the wrong number. I, I, it sounds like I might. I, I might. Uh, is this the Yi residence over there on Red Cardinal Place? Still here. All right. Anyway. Um. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so. Hi, it's Jewel. Um, I am not available at the moment. <laughs> yep, that's clear. Zoom. It says that. Uh, Hello. Hi, this is Carl Krenzel. How are you today? Good. I'm not sure if I have the right person. I was looking for the Adams residence over there on Country Club Vista. Is that you? It is. Oh, perfect. Okay, well, my name is Carl Krenzel. I got some great news for you. It's not a sales call. <laughs> um, again, my name's Carl. I'm a broker over here at Sotheby's International Realty. I'm calling because we just sold a property uh, of your neighbors down the street from you over there at uh, 3640 North Kai Agua Verde. Uh, their property uh, was a 2,300 square foot place. We sold it in 16 days for 425,000. Seller is super happy, uh, but you know we got some buyers. That, that isn't in our H HOA. Oh, no, ma'am, I know it's just down the it's just down the way from you, actually. And the reason why I'm calling you in specific is because uh, people that were calling about our place they're unhappy because they missed out and they want to buy some in the area. So I thought I would reach out to you and see if perhaps you folks had considered selling your property at all. Have you? Absolutely not. No, I don't Just blame you. That, we love it. I, I don't blame you. That's a beautiful area. You said you lived there how long? Five years. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, five years? No kidding. Wow. Yeah, you're just getting sort of settled in. You probably still got some boxes in the garage then, huh? Yeah, no boxes. We redid <laughs> the garage. We're, we're still finalizing all our remodels. Oh, well, God bless your heart. That's awesome. Okay. Well, uh, since I've got you here anyway, Mrs. Adams, do you happen to know of anyone else here in the area that would be open to an all-cash offer on an unwanted home? I don't. No worries. Well, listen, you be sure to stay out of this heat today. It's going to be a scorcher, okay? We're just on our way back into it. We've been gone for almost a month. <laughs> <laughs> well, turn on the air conditioner and hop in the pool. <laughs> Talk to you later. Okay. Have a bye. great day. Bye. See ya. All right. Now, uh, there we go. We're trying to get through this uh, news here, but we were dialing three at a time. And uh, whew, boy, we had... Uh, list of uh, the closest 100 people to this property. And uh, as it worked out, uh, we, uh, we've we called 87 of them so far. So we're coming to the end of the, of the line here. It says that uh, investors are buying more of the properties. It says big private equity firms, real estate speculators, and others that buy properties comprised more than 11% of U.S. home purchases in 2018. Sorry but the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. I think that was a, uh, a typo because this article was written today and it said that, uh, said that, uh, 11% of the home purchasers in 2018 released data. Uh, it says that CoreLogic released this data on Thursday. And if you read the article written by the wall street journal, printed June 27th, 2019, which is today. Okay. They were saying that this, this data came out Thursday, which would either be today, which is Thursday or last week, which is Thursday. And they're saying that the data, and this is, I'm just reading it straight from their article, right? Says that big private equity firms, real estate speculators, and others that buy properties comprised more than 11% of us home purchasers in 2018 according to data released on Thursday by CoreLogic. I think that's a typo because I think what they're really talking about is 11% of the U.S. home purchasers in 2019. Uh, so far, you could say that uh, perhaps. I don't know about, or, or maybe if you're talking about all of 2018, but I don't know why you would have to wait until June to get that data. That seems rather dumb. I mean, you could have that data, CoreLogic would have that data prior to this. So it seems to me like this is a, a typo, but 
basically big, uh, big commercial property owners like Blackstone Group, Starwood Capital, uh, Capital Group began buying thousands of homes out of foreclosure during the housing bust. Many economists credit investors with helping to stabilize the market in 2011 and 12 by buying with cash when prices were low. Strong rental demand, technology that facilitates buying homes online, and low interest rates that make other investments less appealing have fueled investor appetite. Well, you know, that's what you could say, but I don't think that's probably accurate. Hello? Thanks for calling Whole Foods Market River Road. Hmm. Located at 5555 East River Road. Well, that's in the right neighborhood, but that's not what I want. Our hours are 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Sunday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hang up. Where's the... Wrong number here. All right. Hang on just a second here, folks. What I'm doing is I'm unlocking this so I can change that phone number so I won't call them again. All right. So wrong number. Delete. Don't count it. Unlock that number. Delete, wrong number. Okay, there we go. All right, had to delete, had to delete that one because it was uh, in the neighborhood, but it was the Whole Foods that's on the corner around the street, <laughs> around the corner, I should say. It's it's in the neighborhood. It's just not who we want to call. Uh, so, the, what the, Hello? hi, this is Carl Krenzel. How are you? Good, how are you doing? I am well, thank you. I was looking for the Wade residence over there on Roadrunner Haven Place. Have I got the right place? Uh, yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay. Well, listen, uh, my name's Carl Krenzel. I'm a broker over here at Sotheby's International Realty. We just sold that home over at 3640 North Cay Agua Verde. It was down the way from you. It was a uh, three-bedroom, uh -huh. three-bath place. We sold it in 16 days for 425000 do you know of anybody else in that sure. area who's interested in selling? Because we got some folks who are wanting to buy. Do you know anybody? Uh, I have a vacant land. You want to? You want to buy a vacant land? How much do you want for the vacant land? Uh, two fifty. Mm, that's a little a little steep, my friend. Okay. Well, listen. Do you know anybody else? Uh, no, I don't know anybody else. All right, brother. Well, I appreciate your time, and I hope you have a great no. day. Thank you. You Take care. Bye-bye. Mm, bye. bye. So something to think about when people are talking to you about land, especially when it comes to the raw land. Rosa? Bueno. Bueno, habla inglés. Bueno. 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 Okay. No puedo ir. Right, so what we're going to do. Beep. Beep. Right. Hang up. Okay. There we go. So, thing to think about when it comes to raw land. Thank you for calling. For service, please press one. Is that the vacant land itself? If you're buying it so you can rebuild and, and build a building on it, you don't want the, the, the acquisition cost of the land and, and the final product in order for you to build on it. You know, once you put the utilities in there, once you've leveled it out, graded it, straightened it out, got it all ready to go, the total cost of acquisition and preparation of the land in order for you to build on it, you don't want it to be more than 25% of the total cost of the home. So for example, some guy tells you, I got some land next to my house and I'm selling it for a hundred thousand. Then you could say, okay, well, in order, and he says, well, it's got all the utilities there. And by the way, we, boom, we just called up all that subdivision, all hundred of those numbers. We just completed calling all of those. Wow. Okay. Uh, so in any event, um, if he says, well, gosh, I got a hundred uh, I got a lot. I want to sell for a hundred thousand dollars. It's next to me. It's got, uh, it's, you know, kind of leveled out. You just got to build it. You're going to still have to do some lot prep for sure. But if he's saying the utilities are already there, then that's a, a large part of the problem, right? So you just got to prep the land. And if he's saying, I want a hundred thousand for it, or it's, 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 it's tax assessed at 120 or something along those lines, 
Well, then you figure, okay, well, four times that hundred would be what the house needs to be worth, no more than what the house is worth. Well, if you sold a home in the area for 425 and it's a 2,300 square foot property, well, then you know that chances are if you build a 2,300 square foot place in that home in that area, eh, maybe 425, 400-ish. So you don't want to spend more than 100 or so on the land to get it all ready. So you can already see that if one guy's saying that he's willing to sell his lot for 100, okay, then it's still a little high. You probably need to get less than 100 in order for it to make sense as a buildable lot because you're still going to have to prep it. You're still going to have to get things ready and you're still going to have to make it to where it's uh, ready to go. And it's more than likely that it's not going to be a 400 plus thousand dollar house that you're building in that neighborhood. I mean, 400,000 is about the top end, right? So then when you have another person tells you, well, I'll sell it to you for 250,000. That's, and you're still calling that same area. You know that that's not even close to reality. That's not even close. That's not even in the, like when people say, well, I want to get in the ballpark. That's not even in the ballpark. That's not even in the parking lot. You're out in the street by the stop sign turning into the ballpark. That's where you are with a 200 and something thousand dollar request for your lot. Because why? Because in order for you to build for that, to make that work, it has to be no more than 25%, which means that's going to be an eight, nine hundred thousand dollar house by the time you get done building on it. In order for it to make sense, you have to build an eight or nine hundred thousand dollar house on it. And in that neighborhood, when homes are selling at 425, you're not going to do it. That's how you can quickly tell if it's something that's a, a nonsense claim. That's why knowing the market is critically important. We're talking about this uh, CoreLogic report saying that, uh, that there's uh, a strong demand obviously for investors buying properties. They were saying that it's because of homes buying online, low interest rates, uh, make other investments less appealing and fueled investor appetite. And that's kind of but what we were talking about the other day when the interest rates uh, in, in some of the other uh, investments that are a little bit historically have been a little bit riskier and you got a little bit greater in interest rate. But if the interest rates on those risky investments, even if they're not that great, eh, you know, maybe real estate's not a bad appetite. Maybe that's not a bad place to go. And that's why you get a lot of people who are investing in the market. They're saying investors are an especially powerful force at the bottom of the market where they often pay cash, right? Now, here you are as an investor buying property. It says per investors purchased one in five homes in the bottom third price range in 2018, right? Now, there's a couple things that uh, I want to bring to your attention here says that uh, we're talking about a couple different investors that I had read here. It says, when Tuan Davis launched a business renting out single family homes three years ago, he focused on Philadelphia because of the city's slow foreclosure process and history of disinvestment, he said. Mr. Davis typically purchases homes for $75,000 to $90,000, puts an additional $50,000 to $80,000 in a renovation, and then rents them out for $1,300 a month. He's often welcomed in these neighborhoods because of these modestly priced rental properties help act as a bulwark against gentrification. Many of these renters are work and uh, single, uh, single and work as nurses or adjunct professors, right? He says uh, that they would much rather see him than a lawyer from New York. Now, when you think about it, okay, in your marketplace, how expensive are things to live? How things are, are, are they to, to, to buy and build? If, if you're like most areas, Okay, you're probably in an area where building to rent is becoming very profitable. You know, there's a lot of places where people cannot buy because of one reason or another. And uh, as a matter of uh, investment, what people will do is they will go ahead and buy property in that area and uh, improve it for renting out, right? So building to rent is becoming a more popular thing to do, right? So the next step uh, here, before we get into that story, we're going to go ahead and call, call around this property that I just listed here recently. Again, trying to find buyers who would be interested in the property. Um, so we're just calling the 50 around the home that I had uh, listed. We're dialing into there three at a time. So we'll see what happens there while we talk about the build to rent marketing, uh, build to rent housing market. Uh, this is again, according to CNBC, uh, says that, uh, Three points you want to take away from this during the foreclosure crisis nearly 10 years ago. Oh, you know what? I've got the wrong number. I apologize. 
Sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh huh. Not sure. Who that was. All right. There we go. There we go. So um says that during the foreclosure crisis nearly 10 years ago, investors plowed into the market buying millions of distressed homes. Hello? Hi, this is Carl Krenzel. How are you? Okay. I'm not sure if I've uh, got the right person. Are you the fellow who owns the property over there on Shorecliffe Place, 225, the Simon residence? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay. Well, my name is Carl Krenzel. Uh, I'm a broker over here at Sotheby's International Realty. I've just listed that property for sale recently uh, over there at 254 Shorecliffe. It's uh -huh. just down the way from you. Um, it's an 1,879 square foot place. And we're currently asking 289,000 for it. I was just calling to see if uh -huh. you happen to know of anybody who'd be interested in moving no. to the area. Do you know anybody? No. Okay. No, no problem. Uh, I'm just curious. Uh, right. Have you thought about selling your property at all? No, no. We're here, we're here for the rest of our lives. Oh, well, good. Well, that sounds like that's going to be a good long time away. You you uh, sound yeah, very healthy. I gotta go. All right. You have a great Thank day. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Build to rent housing markets. This week, ERC Home Builders is launching a soft IPO, hoping to raise $100 million to build more than 1,000 rental homes across Florida. Oh, boy. Right? Hello? Hello, Miss Gordon, Miss Blondes. Hello. Hmm. I'm just going to get another call anyway. Got the, they're launching a soft IPO to raise a hundred million dollars to build more than a thousand rental homes. The build to rent business is growing fast, with several companies, including big names, dipping into it. Toll Brothers. Hello. Hi, this is Carl Krenzel. How are you? Carl? Yeah, I was looking for the Throckmortons. Have I got the right place? Oh, boy. The build the rent business is growing fast. With several companies, including big names, dipping into it, Toll Brothers recently assigned uh, announced a $60 million investment in a joint venture with BB Living, a build to rent company based in Phoenix. Now, if you're in Phoenix, you're in the Arizona, you're in Arizona, you can immediately recognize how this is important, right? So when you think about it, okay, back in the day, you know, back when the market crashed, investors were all buying all these investment properties and so on and so forth um, and, and rehabbing them, right? Fixing them. Um, they were also speculating, right? Nowadays, I see people doing the same sort of thing except for the speculation, right? But what's happening now is because there's so much rehabbing going on, all right? So much uh, so much business that's being done from investors rehabbing properties, putting them back on the market, it makes it difficult for first-time home buyers to buy property. Maybe you've had this situation where you've had a first-time home buyer been beaten out several times on a transaction. And they were trying to buy a property and they wrote a letter saying how they, you know, they got a family, this and that and the other, and they got beat out anyway, <laughs> right? Maybe that's happened to you, okay? Well, you're going to start to see. Sorry, but the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. You're going to start to see where people. Goodbye. You're going to start to see where people and companies are starting to build these companies. I'm sorry, build these uh, places. All right, uh, for uh, rental in, uh, for rental income. Okay. Sorry, the initial call. Please use your name and number and a this message, and I'll get back. So, Lenar, right? They kind of experimented with something like this with a build to rent community in Sparks, Nevada, and uh, they've they've started something like that too. You know, in 2017. 37,000 homes were built as rentals, according to the National Association of Home Builders. And that number increased to 43,000 last year, or just under 5% of all the total family housing starts. Now, when you think about it, okay, think about this. You've got 
a glut of new homes. It's taking 6.4 months to sell. You've got people rehabbing homes and it's taking longer to sell. Even in some places, the values are starting to tip. Why? Because people can't afford homes or the gentrification that's going on. And so you have people, whether it be companies like Lennar, Toll Builders, uh, B&B, or small fellows, like we just talked about that guy in, in, uh, in Philadelphia, who are building these rental type properties because they see this as an ancillary type of income. Okay. So understand it's not just you. Okay. The reason why we bring these stories up every day during the prospecting, and I accept that it can be laborious. Okay. I can accept the fact that sitting here and listening to people call and talk and, and, and say no and all that can be very uh, old very quickly. I get it. But the reason why we do this is so that you can sit here and listen to the news and understand it in a way that's going to be helpful in your marketplace. And you can help relate it to the clients, you know, as you talk to them. So today, let's uh, let's see a quick brief uh, overcap of what we've talked to, uh, number of uh, people we talked to today. Uh, today is June 27th. We called 26 expireds, 119 uh, geo leads, which are just, just listed, just sold, things of that nature. 20, uh, let's see, 20 for sale by owners, 25 for rent by owners, 62 pre-foreclosures, which is a total of 252 leads. We made 354 calls, 38 contacts, dropped five voicemails, set one call back, and uh, the total time on the phone was an hour and 27 minutes, right? So let's take a quick look at that call back that we had. And we'll see, it's been about an hour now, so let's see. See if we can end this on a high note. Callbacks. That's another cool thing, as I mentioned about the uh, Vortex system, is you can go ahead and uh, have your callbacks set up in here so you know exactly what you need to do and who you need to talk to. It looks like... Looks like this is him right here. Yeah, Stephen. Yeah, that was him. Looks like I've got him here for a couple things. 27th and 8th. Interesting. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to call him up right now. Let's see what the story is. All right. So, put this on speakerphone. See what happens. Maybe nothing. Hello. Hi, Mr. Soto. Yes. Hey, Steve Carl. This is a, you told me to give you a call back in about an hour. Is this a better time? Yeah, it's a little better. I can help you. Yeah, no problem. So uh, real quick, you had a couple different properties that was for sale. I was just following up with you about it. One was on 8th and the other was on 27th. Whatever, yes. whatever happened with those? Nothing. They're still there for sale. Oh, okay. All right. No worries. I, I'm a broker here in town with Sotheby's, and I noticed that is the eighth place is that still on for three hundred, and the twenty uh, seventh place still for two fifty. Yes. Okay. All right. And I'm curious about how long do you think you'll take before you'll consider interviewing a powerful agent to get those properties sold for you, as opposed to just uh, for sale by uh, owner. Well, the thing is that I mean, I've I've, I've already had some offers from people. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I'm not. It's not something where I'm like nine one one need to sell them. Mm -hmm. I just put them up just to ah, see what see what they can get. You know what I mean? Okay. And believe I believe it or not, I can't believe some of the offers I've gotten. You know what I mean? Uh -huh, like, I totally above, believe it. Yeah, like above above what the market's at for those houses. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm like, no, I just I, I just basically just put them out there just to see what I can get for them. Are you? Uh, I'm curious. Are you uh, renting those places out at all? You just want to just sell them all together? Or have you rented them no, out? Or? No, they're already rented out. Yeah. So, so both of these places are rental properties. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And, and how long have you, may I ask how long have you owned these properties? Um, like more than five years? No, probably less. Okay. I think like four years. Well, the only reason why I'm asking is, is uh, if you're selling both of these properties, 
uh, are you, is your intention to just sell them or is your intention to kind of keep them? No, either or. I mean, if, okay. I, if I get a good, a good offer to come, I'll let them go. But if not, then I'll just keep them and continue yeah. renting them. Well, the, yeah. These are, okay. yeah, these are not the, these are the only ones that I have that are in, in my name. The other, the other 15 are in the LLC. Okay. got gotcha. you. All right. No worries. Well, the only reason why I asked was I was just calling to see if perhaps you'd ever considered just doing a like a 1031 exchange on those and buying something up a little bit, maybe it'll make you a little bit more money. Yeah. Had you considered uh, that? Uh, no, I hadn't. I mean, are you familiar with a tax deferred exchange? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I had another, another, another realtor that went over that with me. Uh -huh. He's like, Hey, have you ever heard about this? And then I told him no. And he explained everything to me. Mm -hmm. Well, it's certainly, uh, certainly something you may want to consider because especially uh, I don't know on those other 15 properties or whatever you may have, yeah. but, uh, do you have any of those properties as a duplex or triplex? Do you have any triplexes, duplexes, anything like that? Yeah, I have five of them. Okay. So then you immediately know exactly what I'm talking about, how it's way easier to get the money out of those. And they're a lot more profitable. Yep. So I'm wondering if it, and it may not be, I might be wrong, but if it was, financially advantageous for you to sell these properties now, both of them and do a 1031 exchange into a, I don't know, something a little bit better, like a duplex. Would you? It, it depends. Like you said, I might be, able, I might be wanting to do that. Just to check them out. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't mind if, uh, if it's okay with you, uh, with your permission, I'll just do a little research on both of those properties, kind of get an idea of what I think that, that uh, the maximum would be that you could probably get out of those. Okay. Um, and then, you know, we could sit down sometime over some coffee at a Starbucks or whatever, and, and we could kind of go over those numbers and then well, you can figure out what's best for you. Would something like that help? Yeah, that, that'll help out. Okay. What would be a good time for us to get together? You got some time uh, Friday uh, or would uh, next Monday be better? Probably next Monday. How about Monday at, uh, oh, that's July 1st. How about uh, two o'clock? Sounds good to me, bud. Okay. Where do you want to meet my friend? Um, I don't know where you uh, typically work, what part of town or anything. Steve? Uh-oh. Steve? Steve? Hello? Guess we're going to call him back. Oh. Five, two, zero, three, zero, five, five, nine, nine, two. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to text him now. So. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to text him right here. Hey, Steve. When is a good time to talk about the houses? All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to send over that little Prezi uh, thing that we talked about before, right? So what we're going to do is we're just going to pull this up in our notes section right there, right? Copy that. And then... Put this as a paste because he has an iPhone, right? You can see that right there on the on YouTube. And boom, you can see how it comes up as a little boom presentation there. So if he's serious, right, then uh, he has a way to reach me. I have a way to reach him and we will talk. But if he's not interested, then I'm not going to worry about it. It's not the end of the world. All right. So what we're going to do, you heard a couple things there that first he has uh, 16 other properties in a LLC somewhere or something like that, which is good. Um, one thing you definitely want to consider if you're new is going after people who have multiple properties like this because it eliminates you from having to make 16 different presentations to 16 different people. If you could talk to one person 
who has 16 properties who's considering selling, then that is significantly better than talking to 16 different people who uh, you'd have to figure something out with. Well, I tried, did the best I could. And unfortunately we didn't, A, we were not able to get any appointments today. So we will go ahead and uh, keep up with this uh, a little bit later on this afternoon. No home, uh, what is it? No hope lost. Uh, there is no bad thing. You want to consider this every day, just in baseball, right? I mean, that's the best way I heard somebody say it on the Red X the other day. This is a lot like playing, playing baseball. Seven, you know, you have six, seven innings where nothing will happen. And then you, you're you geared up for that one moment where there's a crack at the bat. And then the next thing you know, it's showtime. It wasn't showtime for the last two hours. We went over some good information. Hopefully you learned something. And if you didn't, well, I'm sorry. We tried, but hopefully you did. And if you did, do me a favor, share the podcast. Let somebody know about it. Tell me what you learned. I'd love to hear about it in the comments section, what you thought was the best thing you heard. And until the next time, I hope you have a powerful sales day. Bye-bye.